Hi, Fempreneurs. Welcome to episode 104 of the Fempreneur Marketing Podcast. My guest today is Krati, and she is coming to us all the way from India. She has so much knowledge to share. I loved her go-getter, uh, no BS attitude. I, I, she kind of caught me off guard near the end of this interview with that, and I loved it. Um, so you're gonna love you're gonna love getting to know her and learning more about how she started her business, what she's doing to grow her business, and yeah, just it's, she's an, a young a young fempreneur, and she's so inspiring. So let's dive into the interview. So tell us a little bit about maybe just first of all start with what presently you're up to. Like tell us about your day. What kind of stuff have you been up to all day? Okay, so I am currently uh, about to like go uh, like launch a YouTube channel, which is something like such a familiar territory for me because I'm not really a video person, but I'm gonna, gonna go ahead and do it because Instagram is really frustrating for me. I don't really like sharing those like short form content. They don't seem to like really make me feel engaged or like I'm really creating value here. So I thought YouTube's better. I really get to say my piece on whatever topic I pick up. I get to feel like I'm actually giving value to whoever is giving me their time. So yeah, I'm now publishing a YouTube channel. Hopefully, like the first video, well, it's already published, but the first video goes live uh, on Monday, and I'm gonna Yay! do two videos. Yeah. Good for you, that's fantastic. <laughs> I totally feel you with YouTube. I agree. I love YouTube. My future is YouTube. Uh, I've been dabbling in a lot of things on Instagram for the last like two and a half, three years, but I've also been putting a lot of content on YouTube and. Um, I do find the conversion rate of people who are watching the videos there versus here is way higher, way higher over okay. on YouTube. Yeah. And uh, are really you familiar cool. with Mr. Beast on YouTube? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because I actually really, was like, given time to any of his content, but I'm I'm familiar with who he is and his yeah. <laughs> he actually. Uh, I was just driving back with my boyfriend from our weekend away, and we were listening to the episode where Joe Rogan interviews Mr. Beast because Joe Rogan's like you know, he's 50. He's like, I don't know who you are. And I was totally in the same boat. And I went to a YouTuber conference in, in LA and I'm literally like standing beside Mr. Beast and all these other YouTubers who have millions and millions and millions of followers. I didn't know who any of them were. And, and so anyways, what I love about Mr. Beast is how he's such a nerd when it comes to how to create thumbnails and like the best videos and the best time of day and the best day of the week to post. And like, he's so knowledgeable and because he's so far gone, like he's, he's the top YouTuber in the world. He shares everything that he knows. So anyways, I don't know if you've ever listened to any podcasts interviews with him, but I'm really diving into his stuff right now. Even though I don't want to attract the same type of audience as he does, he knows a lot of the technical YouTube stuff. Um, but I'm just so excited for you to be starting your YouTube channel. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm learning the ropes. I'm, I'm sort of exploring how best to do it. Like, because I am such, like, I'm such a, how would, how would you describe it? Like, I, I'm really not good with camera and video stuff. So um, we'll see how this goes. But I'm also someone who, who doesn't need, like, who doesn't wait around for things to line up perfectly before I leave in. I'm, I'm good to go. I don't mind criticism. I don't mind harsh feedback even. I'm good with it. I'm like, let's go ahead and do it. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> good for you. Good for you. Okay. So today, currently in the modern present time, you are building your YouTube channel. Um, how did you, because obviously to start building a YouTube channel, you need to know your niche. You have a podcast, so you needed to know your niche for that. How did you find out who that group of people is that you're meant to serve and then actually get started serving them? Yeah, so when I started doing this work, initially it was on volunteer, it was like volunteer work that I was doing, where, where and I got to like hold space for all these people who were having a variety of problems, like someone was depression, there were some people who were abuse victims, and there were people who were just, you know, fed up with how their life was going, they wanted to create a better life. So I was talking to like all kinds of people from different walks of life, different ages, uh, and yeah, it was great. Like it felt great to help these people. And then when I started like officially like giving time, making appointments and coaching people, I think it made most sense uh, to do this work for women because A, I had the most success with them. And when I show up for a woman, I think my intensity and my energy is crazy high. Like I get emotionally invested. Like it is, it, it, it's personal for me. I don't know how professional yeah. that is. 
<laughs> I am able to like, do what needs to get done, but I get very invested. I think that has a lot to do with my mom um, and like the kind of life she had. Uh, I think that, let's not go into that, uh, that's what I want to know, <laughs> because that makes me super emotional, but it has a lot to do with her since, you know, because I've seen how she puts herself down despite being, I think, one of the most intelligent people I know, being so incredibly resourceful, and I don't know anyone who's tougher than she is. But despite that, I keep hearing her, you know, putting herself down. She lets people take her for granted. And I, since I can't do anything for her, uh, you know, because she doesn't really need my help anymore. I can't go back in time and, like, make it so she never loses that confidence, that self-worth. Um, but I can't do that anymore for her. I can do that for other women. So I channel all of that intensity to helping other women. So that feels great to me. So now I, I dedicate all of my energy working with women and it. It has like it, it works well for me because you can when you really niche down and when you really figure out who exactly you want to work with, you can really focus your content as well. So yeah. now I am very fully dead. Like just a few days back, I was exploring this uh, subject around feminine energy. Like if you work in a way that utilizes your feminine energy to have more productivity. So something that not a lot of women know about. We work in a way that is very masculine in how in how we generate productivity. Like hustle, 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 which is great. Like you have to do it, especially if you're running a business and you're in the initial stages of it. But apparently there is such a thing as you working with your feminine energy so that it serves you. I'm learning all about it and it's so fascinating so that I can like weave it into my content and help, you know, my clients do the same thing. Yeah, that's so cool. I love how you felt called to serve your mom back before you know before you were probably even a grown woman and that's that's one of the inspiration yeah. the it, one of the inspiring factors that sparked your business I've actually never heard anyone say that before that's really cool and I've never <laughs> thought about that with my own mother but I I can relate to that as you were saying that I was like wow I I remember feeling like I had to cheer my mom on and like, I, I actually felt like I was coaching my mom a lot of the time when I was like a teenager, probably from starting from about the age of 10. I felt like I was coaching her. I shouldn't really have girlfriends. And I remember looking at that and being like, why don't you have a lot of girlfriends? Yeah. You know, like why, why are you not surrounding yourself with awesome women? Um, yeah. And anyways, so there's a lot of things about my mom that I think are awesome, but there's a lot of things that I looked at and I was like, mm, I'm not going to do it like that. <laughs> I mean, as we all, as we all do, and we look at our mothers, right? Um, that's really cool. So you coach ambitious women. What specifically are they maybe experiencing, um, or maybe they're feeling blocked by that causes them to reach out to you? And then how do you move them through that kind of stuff? Just give us some examples. So I work with women, initially I'm working with like women who just wanted to like recalibrate their life. But now I work with women who are very mission driven, who either want to like up level in a way so that they can show up with more courage, more conviction. So mostly uh, the kind of women who uh, approach me are women who are struggling with confidence. So women who are very susceptible to external negativity and they're having a hard time going all in with their projects, whatever adventure they want to take on, especially, you know, so far as their business is concerned, like their, their business is doing good, but they want to scale up. They want to increase right. their visibility. But of course, that requires a lot of self confidence They struggle with that. There are all kinds of narratives that are playing in their head. So I mostly help women with that. And then there are, of course, some women who want to like create better energy around their work. They want to sort of learn how to handle their emotions. It's not really about anyone else or even about the world that they're facing. It's more about what is going on inside. And they want to like have more calm, more control and less of the chaos, which I love. I love Wow. So cool. So tell us about where you live. Like, where are you? What's it like living there? Are, are a lot of your clients in your physical kind of area or a lot of your clients around the world? Like, tell us all that. Yeah, I'm in India. I'm in North India. So I live in this small, uh, this is like this small, nice city, Mohali. It's in Punjab. Uh, and yeah, I, I moved here because my parents are here and I wanted to be like, especially after uh, COVID and everything, I wanted to be where my parents are so that if ever, like I'm someone who I feel so indebted to my parents. They have been like incredible parents and they've been there for me 
you know, step of the way. So I want to do the same for them. Like if they have so much as a cough, I want to be there, make sure they have everything they need. <laughs> and just take care of them. Also, they're very independent, so they make it very hard for me to take care of them. <laughs> but I still like to do as much as I can for them. So that's why I live, I live here with my parents and it's, it's awesome. I love, yeah, I love living in India. Like I spent a year uh, studying abroad. So while I was doing my master's, I was living in London, which again, I enjoyed it thoroughly. Great experience. But I've never really wanted to live in any other country other than India. Like I've always wanted to stay in my own country. Um, I think it's the emotional, emotionally motivated reason. Uh, yeah, and my parents are here, of course, as I said. So I, I yeah, I love, I love living here. But what was the other, yes, the other question was about my clients. No, I don't have very many Indian clients yet. Uh, I have been taking some inquiry calls with Indian women, but I don't yet have very many Indian clients. Like I have one Indian client, and most of my clients are either Canadian, Australian, uh, American. Yeah. Wow. And how are you getting these clients? Like, talk to the fempreneur who's listening to this interview on the podcast right now, who's either getting ready to start a business or she started a business and she's like, how do I get clients? Like I know my niche, I know who I want to serve, but how do I get those clients? What are some things that you did that have resulted in getting clients? I wish I could give you like pro like tips here, but what I would say is I think you have to show up with a lot of honesty and authenticity so that like from the get go, they know exactly who they're getting on a call with. I think that's very important so that there's no, like they're not expecting someone else and someone else shows up. And the other thing that really worked for me was just taking all of that authenticity and putting it into my podcast. Like my podcast so far, I think most, almost all of my clients have come from the podcast and a few of them have, been, have come from Instagram, but most of them have come from my podcast because on my podcast, I really let go. I am very candid. I'm very open about my struggles. As I said, on Instagram, I don't really feel like I'm all that engaged. Uh, but on pod, my podcast, I get to do that. And I have had like, some really powerful people on my podcast and really amazing women as well and men as well. Like initially, the podcast gave it to everyone. Now it's women-centric. Uh, and I love that. And I really got to show up. Like in my solo episodes, I get to share some of my stories, some of my struggles. And I get to like coach people if they're having similar struggles. And it just feels great. And I think that is how I booked. Like I did, I also did a lot of conscious marketing. Like I ran ads and all, but that never worked for me. I think it's like, I think one of the biggest struggles that I have is that anything that's commercialized too much, I don't, I, I sort of lose my essence. I get really hung up in how commercialized it is and what does it, like is my messaging even coming across as it should? are these people really seeing the kind of person I am? Because I don't want right. to waste anybody's time. I really want to get my message across, what I'm about, how I need you to show up for us, to have a successful collaboration. And I just, I've not, never really enjoyed the, the conventional marketing rules like the ads and all that doesn't really work for me. I would much right. rather have a conversation with, with powerful women like yourself and like do more podcasts. Like now the YouTube is something that, where you will see me show up exactly as I am, not holding back anything, showing up in my true persona. Like a lot of my friends would ask me, why aren't you more funny? Like you're funny in real life. Why aren't you more yeah. funny on your content? I'm like, first of all, I don't know if the topic's warranted, but maybe I do like script things a little. I'm going to stop doing that. And I haven't scripted anything in like a good six months now, which is kind of wow. scary, you know? But it's so awesome that you trust yourself enough to just yeah. know that you're going to find the right thing to say. And I, I remember feeling that shift for myself as well when I felt like I had to always have like five or six bullet points on a piece of paper just in case I got stumped <laughs> or I just didn't want to forget to say these six or seven things or ask these six or seven questions. And I remember feeling that shift where I was like, I don't think I need that. And then I think, yeah, like you, when you had friends saying that to you, I think I had friends saying that to me too. They were like, I really like it when you just wing it. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I can chicken wing it a little more often. Let's see how this goes. And yeah. So I think that the more you, um, and like you are having these conversations with um, people so often for your podcast, and then you're being interviewed like today for other podcasts, um, you start to just have those kind of token things that you say. Yeah. 
you know, yeah. and you, and you just know that you're never going to be at a loss for words because yeah. 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 That's really cool. So you started a podcast how long ago? Oh, the podcast has been on for more than a year, I think close to, in fact, two years, but I wasn't very consistent initially. And uh, yeah, so it's been, I've been consistent with it for a year, I would say. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah, I, I had the same thing when I first started podcasting. I, I went through a phase where I was kind of like doing it when I felt like it. <laughs> and then, yeah, for the last year, it's been very consistent. We actually just hit 100 episodes. I'm not sure if you knew this or not. So we just hit 100 episodes uh, like a few weeks ago at the beginning of September. So that was a really exciting wow. milestone. Awesome. Yeah. And so it's so cool <laughs> to have you on here and to be um, be able to, I've never interviewed anyone on the podcast from India before. So I was so excited to be able to do this. Um, but yeah, I think one of the things that I, I find so interesting about podcasters is, and this is, this has been something that I did not experience in any other aspect of marketing is the way, you know, you have a booking agent. Is that correct? Yes. Like I someone who reached out to me and said, Hey, I want you, I think that, you know, Krati is a great, you know, guest for you. So is that, would you call that a booking agent? Yeah, I would say, I would say that. Yeah. But I, this is like the first time I'm working with her. So don't ask me. Okay. Well, I was so like, I, I honestly get a ton of emails from booking agents. Um, yeah. And no offense so to the dudes out there, but I rarely say yes to the dudes because I don't find, I like their style. Like I'll go and listen to other episodes that they've been on, or I'll go look at their websites and I, and, and nothing against men. I mean, I have a son and a boyfriend and I'm, I like men, but I don't feel like their energy is often a good fit for my podcast. But so what I do is when I get an email, like the one I got from your booking agent is I, you know, do a little research. I'm like, Oh, look, I love her Instagram posts. Like, Oh, she, she's like, um, got a, you know, a sweet website and, and it's really clear who she serves and what she does. And, um, and she's already got a podcast, which is super cool. So yeah. So I, I do a little bit of research and I'm just like, yeah, let's do it. And, you know, obviously you and I haven't had a conversation before today. So what I was starting to say, and then I kind of rabbit trailed there was the, the world of podcasters, the way podcasters support one another and help each other's podcasts grow by doing exactly what we're doing today is amazing. And I'm part of a website like app thing called Audrey. Have you heard of Audrey? I think so. I think so. Yeah. yeah it's Audrey.io. And I recently discovered this whole other world, which is where podcasts that have, you know, um, you know, say a, a thousand downloads per, per episodes or more, they will let you buy a little bit of advertising time on their podcast and they'll, they'll create like you do kind of like a bio. I don't know if you've done this or not. I just did it for the first time and it came out on their podcast episode, uh, like a van life ep podcast. And they, yeah, so this, this, it's hosted by a boyfriend and girlfriend, like guy and girl kind of team. She read, she created this out of my bio. She created her own little ad for my podcast and she read it. Um, you know, they kind of sprinkle them throughout their episodes. And I love it because it's a really cool way for them to pick and choose who they want to promote on their podcast, like other podcasts. And yeah they also, they, they create the ads themselves. They like kind of do their own research about you and they, they, you know, anyways, I just thought it was so cool. So I love the world of podcasting. It's not my favorite format um, because I don't think it's really my sweet spot. I do think YouTube is my sweet spot and that's where I'm focusing more of my energy nowadays and going right. forward. But I love it because of the community. I love the way podcasters support each other. So, yeah. um, yeah, so I think it's really cool that you're here and that you have a podcast too, that a lot of my listeners are going to love to check out. What is your podcast called? Oh, the podcast is called on her terms, but I have to let you know that the podcast is undergoing a rebrand, uh, which is crazy because I did a rebrand in May itself and I'm having to redo this again because apparently my podcast agency and I myself also did not check whether we had the right to use that name or not. So somebody has a trademark for it, so we're gonna change the name. Embarrassing mistake to make, but you live and learn. So <laughs> yeah. we've learned a lesson here. So uh, the, it's taking a little bit of time because I wanna like get a name that really like really captures the essence. Because when I picked on her terms, I did not, I did not care for the name very much, but um, you know, 
you're always advised to validate your ideas before you execute them. So then I, I put like the name, I had a list of names and I put them to vote. Honor Terms got the most votes. So I yeah. went ahead and I used that name and I, I did a whole episode. Like my last episode um, was about trusting your intuition more than what everyone else is telling you to do. And my yeah. intuition told me not to go with the name. I did it anyways. And it was like, it was the straw that broke the camel's back. Like I'd made so many decisions that I've had cause to regret lately. And if all of those decisions had one thing in common, I did not trust my instincts. I went with what everyone else was telling me to do. I'm not going to do that again. Yeah, I'm not going to do that again. I don't care mm -hmm. what the whole world is telling me. Like I'll make an informed decision, but the mm. decision has to be supported by my instinct. A little extra that I'm sharing here. <laughs> went on a yeah, thank you. yeah, thank you. Thank <laughs> you. The podcast is called Honor Terms. And soon we're going to rebrand and come up with another name. So what I advise is keep following the Instagram and like join the newsletter. The newsletter is another platform where I get really candid and really open with my with whoever has joined all of my subscribers. And if you're on that newsletter, you're going to get all the deeds. Nice. When people subscribe to your email list, I'm, I do teach an email marketing course. So I'm always curious to know how others are doing email marketing. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was actually just listening to an interview with Amy Porterfield before I hopped on this call with you. But um, do you have a sequence of emails that automatically starts being sent to new subscribers or do they just get into your email list, get that one welcome email that's, you know, you update it maybe every month and then they just go into the funnel of getting the same emails as the rest of the list? Like how segmented is your list and what can a new subscriber expect? Say they subscribe right now. So if they subscribe through uh, the podcast, like if they pick like one of the links from the podcast, uh, they're going to get all of the updates around the podcast. And they're like once a month, they'll get this uh, email wherein I would put in like a question. Do you want to know about everything else that's going on with my business, with my life? And so if they opt in for any of those, and they're going to get those emails as well. If you have subscribed on like the generic uh, box from the website, you're gonna get generic updates. Unless okay. you like opt in for anything specific, you're not gonna get, because I'm someone who gets very annoyed when I get emails that I didn't ask for. So I don't like to do that to my subscribers either. So yeah, I make sure that if you are subscribing from the podcast, you're only getting stuff related to the podcast. If you're subscribing to a workshop that clearly means you're interested in that kind of stuff, then you're gonna get all of those emails. Right. And what kind of free content do you have right now as a, as a lead magnet, for example, like, are they like back to the email question, I guess, if your podcast, you know, your podcast listeners go into the show notes and click that link to say, I want notifications about the podcast. What are they getting in that first email? Is it, is it an automated email that you've built kind of a welcome to the podcast fan club email? Does it have a free gift in it? Like, what does that email actually contain? I don't think I have, no, I don't have a welcome for the, for the podcast. I don't have a welcome email. You'll just get the next email uh, that gets sent out, which will have okay. updates about like the last two episodes. Right. And that's, that's sweet. I mean, obviously podcasts are free. So when someone is like a huge fan of your podcast, that kind of means they're, they're receiving a lead, a lead magnet in a way. I definitely went back and forth with this concept and been like, uh, but anyways, um, but you know, I have a freebies button on my website and, and uh, under the freebies, you know, on the freebies page is the podcast so along with some other things like a YouTube series, a 22 day Instagram marketing challenge, um, different, different things, not too many things. Um, Amy Porterfield says that we should have, uh, two free gifts. Just by the way, here's the Cole's notes from the episode I was listening to <laughs> two free gifts. And they should kind of be targeted towards those two. Like, I feel like even though we know who we serve, there's often two or three key things that brought them to us, right? So for you, it's often yeah. confidence building, but maybe there's something else that they want. Maybe they want to get a promotion. Maybe they want to get, uh, start their own business. Maybe they, they still need confidence, but they also need another, like, I don't know, I'm just kind of throwing ideas out there. But um, so yeah, so she says you need two lead magnets. And then you need two evergreen courses. So those are things, of course, that people are just buying whenever, starting whenever. And then you need a signature program that you launch once a year. And it's time sensitive and they can only get in a certain window. And then she target, and then she explained her whole marketing campaign for the 60 days leading up to the launch, kind of a pre-launch marketing campaign. 
Um, I'm actually doing that right now with some courses uh, that are coming out. I've got, I've, I've got four, I see I'm not, I'm breaking the Amy Porterfield rule. I'm doing four evergreen courses. Um, but they're basically the one, the one evergreen course that I already have kind of packaged into the four things that are already in that course, but they're separated out or someone can just buy all four of them. Um, yeah. Anywho, so that's all coming out. So I'm, I'm curious to know how like online courses and just like packaging your knowledge into even a book, how, like how has that looked for your business? I'm, I'm not interested right now doing launching a course or writing a book. Like I'm never going to write a self-help book. That's never going to happen. As in right. when I do write, you know, write a book, like I'm someone, I'm a very passionate reader. Books were the only friends I had growing up. So I value books like you wouldn't believe. So I will never create something that I don't believe is life altering. So right. <laughs> for me, I would, I would much rather create like a fiction book. So I okay. don't think that would ever tie into my business. Yeah. And that would happen. Yeah. Like I, I am always, I'm never not writing. I write every day, but they are not, yeah. they're not, that's like, the self-help content is already on the website. You can read it there. It's all nice. for free. Um, then I do some fiction writing every day just for fun. Um, ah. As for long yeah, of course, of course. I'm a massive superhero nerd. There are superheroes, there are dragons, there's everything that's, that you can imagine or not. <laughs> it's all in there. <laughs> so that's like a whole other world where I get to step in every day for like 30 minutes. Keeps me sane. Um, as for the course, I am really loving the one-on-one -on -one thing that I'm doing. Mm. I know everyone says that you know, it's, it's a road to burnout city. I don't feel that because as I said, mm. I get to like, like give my focus attention and like be there fully, be part of that journey with that person, with the woman who is like, investing in me. So I'm, I'm really loving that. Maybe down the line, I'll do a course if yeah. I feel like I can, you know, like chalk, make it chalk with no value. I'll do it. Yeah. Right now, I'm not there. I'm happy with the one-on-one -on -one thing that I'm doing. And I like to keep things very, like, no chaos zone that my business has to, like, have no chaos in it. So what Amy, Amy Porterfield is suggesting, I'm sure it's a good suggestion. That's why she made it. I know she's very good at her job. Um, yeah. But all of that, that is not for me. Yeah, it's, it's a timing thing. I feel like when I, you know, my my early course the first course I ever um launched I was talking about it while right before you hopped on I only taught it at 6 a.m I had 6 to 12 ladies in it it was 100 percent live so it was zoom but it was live and so it was basically one-on-one -on -one in a lot of ways and um it wasn't evergreen you know what I mean like so I did start turning that I eventually felt like it needed to have an evergreen version but it was because it was just because I felt like that's the way, the way the universe was going and I needed to follow. I didn't, you know, like after you've been doing things for a while and you built up, you know, reputation and people want what you have. Um, there are people that were just simply, they were just like, I'm not doing anything at 6 a.m. Like that is craziness. <laughs> and they were like, do you have an online version of this where you can connect me with other students? And I was like, yeah. that's a great idea. And I, I mean, it's one of those things, right, where when you hear the same question over and over again, or the same encouragement to do something in your business, you kind of have to listen. Um, you know, not if it's going to cause you to burn out, but I was like, well, yeah, I can take this material that I've already built and taught to over a hundred women and I can turn it into a course. Like it's not hard for me to do that. So just to kind of give you some context as to where my mind was going with those course questions. Like I was just curious to know if you find yourself you know, repeating yourself a lot, you know, like all of your clients and the one-on-ones always asking you the same thing. It's like, well, maybe I should make a little course about that or even a free, you know, a free uh, video training that's like 20 minutes long on that particular topic and charge a hundred bucks for it. Or I don't know, like, you know, there's so many different ways of doing it. And I don't believe there's a right or wrong, but I do love listening to people like Amy Porterfield, who will also openly talk about the many times that she made huge mistakes. But, you know, ultimately when you make a mistake once and you reverse engineer what you did wrong and why you wasted a bunch of money, she was telling a story about how she was still running ads for her evergreen program. Like she kind of forgot to shut those off before she launched her big signature program. So she was essentially competing with herself. And then when they, and then when they realized that they didn't do that the next time and it was like explosive, right? Because the only thing someone could buy from her 
not that it wasn't not that the evergreen stuff wasn't available but the only thing that people were seeing on their facebook and instagram through her was just this one thing and it was like duh <laughs> but um yeah just stuff like that i think is so interesting um yeah. what is one of the things that maybe you find women in your one-on-ones are saying to you a lot or asking you a lot is there that thing that comes up really often and can you <clears throat> can you kind of walk us through what you say in response to that question or concern yeah of course um one of the questions that comes across my desk most frequently like that gets asked most frequently in sessions about fear like i want to mm -hmm. do this but i like there's the imposter syndrome there's self doubts like these narratives that are playing on a new like, I've never really done this before. I don't really have the personality to be a business owner. I am not an outgoing person. I'm not an extrovert. I'm a, I'm a massive introvert. No one has ever really seen all of these qualities in me that I'm now trying to portray as a business owner. All of those things uh, come up. And with the, and also there is, of course, all of, I got criticized when I was growing up about these things. And now I'm trying to do these things. How do I make this work for me? And what I think is like, it is the most natural thing for you to feel these fears if you are going like, I, I have this fundamental belief, like if you are not feeling fear, if you're not battling with intense self-doubt, you're not playing big enough. You are, you haven't like, nothing challenging is happening in your life. You're keeping it safe. You're sticking to your comfort zone. And that is never good. Like that is not how you would experience growth in your life. I always tell them that if that is what you're experiencing, if fear is like dominating you right now, congratulations, it means you're up leveling in a big way. So what you got to do now is talk to that fear because so many times the narratives that are playing on a loop in our head make no sense. First of all, the fear has to be a part of it, apart from the fact that you are up leveling in a big way. Fear is going to be there because you're doing something unfamiliar. So that is the most natural part of it. What people now do is because there's so much trauma talk in the world, like psychology sharing it, which is great, like we have knowledge around it. But what we tend to do is we latch onto concepts and we try to fit them into our life. So very often they come up with their own explanations. It could be connected to this trauma that I had growing up, or it could be what you forget is fear is a very, 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 very natural response. You are investing all of your time into a venture you are investing money into a venture. You've got, you're in a high visibility role. You are risking embarrassment. You're risking public failure. So fear mm -hmm. has, it's going to be there. There is no way to do this without fear. I mean, women have been doing it for years and years and who are public figures and are loved and respected and admired for even like the, the silliest of things experience fear too. So it has to be, it's the most natural part of like the whole process. And you got to accept it like that. And then you have to understand the stories that are keeping that fear alive, that are giving it so much strength. And understand whether all of those narratives still apply to you, whether mm. all of those narratives even make any sense for you or not. And right. you, you work through those, obviously with a client, I would work through all of those fears. We'll take them apart one by one. We'll put an alternative story in its place that actually works for them. Another thing that I would say that works, like I, I am a huge, huge fan of, everyone doing this is creating an identity for yourself because when you do something new you have to obviously take on a new persona so you're still the same person but you need a very clear identity as to who i am when i show up in this arena you have to have absolute clarity around that if as a business right. owner i value accountability i value integrity then i have to show up right. like that no matter the amount of fear i may be feeling I did the YouTube mm -hmm. video. I'm going to publish it on Monday. I don't think it's perfect. I think it's far from perfect. It's a very flawed product, but it's going to go online on Monday because I pride myself on getting shit done. So yeah. it's going to happen. So nice. if you have a clear identity and that identity has a clear value system, you have to exercise discipline and show up. Meet, that, meet yourself on that mm -hmm. level because you are now this whole other person. So deliver mm. on that level. That is one way of working through that fear. And if nothing yeah. else is working, please remember that your life has immense value. You have mm. immense value. And if nothing else is working, just say fuck it and do it anyways. Because you're, you're worth it. You're worth that mm. risk. You have to believe that. And, and somewhere you already do. Otherwise, you wouldn't be working with a coach. You wouldn't be doing what you're doing. You wouldn't be taking all of these risks. 
the somewhere you already believe in. You just gotta take apart all of those layers under which it's buried and bring it to you know front and center, so that that yeah. conviction carries you through. I love that you that you sort of said to cancel out the fear or to to kind of move through the fear. Instead, focus instead of you know I think a lot of people like you were saying you know they're like oh what's the trauma at the root of that fear? They're spending yeah. so much time focusing on the in fear and it's yeah. <laughs> not helping you to focus on yeah. the fear let's not analyze the fear to the 27th degree let's analyze the values the values we yeah. have in us i love how you said that what are your values if you value being accountable if you value doing what you say you're going to do you're going to have to tell that fear to beat it so that you can get that video out on time so you can get that podcast out on time so you can show up consistently on YouTube or Instagram or whatever your thing is, or you can send that email. Like you have to overcome the fear. So just stop thinking about the fear and think about the things yeah. you need to do to stay in line with your values. That was really great. Yeah. Wow. You, you, you like really hit that, hit the nail on the head with that. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'll just add one more thing here. Uh, I think we are, we forget that everything, there is no such thing as a healthy adult. We are all mm. damaged and broken in some way. So let's remember that and let's not have all of this hostility towards our own emotions. Fear is one of your emotion. It's part of your experience. So don't treat it with as much hostility like it's there to destroy you. It's not. It's there to keep you safe. So if you approach it with that mindset that let me find out what my friend fear is telling me, it may sound a little juvenile, but that is essentially what you have to do. Like take the information that it's offering you. Because if I am experiencing fear around YouTube, it could be because I've never done it before. It is like a huge, huge arena. Like there are people who are way, way, way better than me. They're like, I, I did like this SEO research on TubeBuddy and it told me that the topic that I've big already has like 42 million videos on it. I'm like, what the fuck am I even doing? Making a video on a topic that already has 42 million videos. <laughs> but I chose a topic that was very fundamental to my coaching. So I was like, I have to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do this every week. So eventually I'll come across a topic that maybe doesn't have billions of videos in it. But considering yeah. how YouTube is, that is unlikely to happen. What am I going to do? Not do it? Well, that's not an option. So you take whatever information fear is offering you, work with it, work through mm -hmm. it. Maybe you will get to the other side where the fear is not so loud. But even if you don't, the values will kick in and you, you got to do it anyways. Yes, yes. So you are kind of following, it sounds like following the strategy of, you know, researching the most searched for topics. And then you're creating content for those topics. That I, is so awesome that you're doing that. Is this the first you time you've done that? Sound like I actually know what I'm doing. I don't. No, but, <laughs> but that's the thing. I, like, I I, like what you're explaining right now is something I've heard every YouTuber who's awesome. Not that I've listened to that many, of, but that, that's what they say to do. Guess who's never done that? <laughs> I'll just create whatever I feel like creating. And I, I, I know who my niche is. But yeah. I, I can see how that can be challenging at times, but I also think I'm ready because I feel like kind of back to what we said at the beginning of this interview, where you have to trust yourself that you're going to find something to say unscripted. Yeah. I feel like I'm there. I feel like if I did that, if I researched, you know, the most searched for topics, um, that I could probably make a video based on that. But yeah, thank you for using that example. That was a good little, um, I get a lot out of these interviews from my podcast from, Fempreneurs. So thank you for inspiring me to maybe try that, even though I've <laughs> known about it for a while, but I've just never done it. I'm like, so yeah. like in my little, oh, I'm going to do what I want to do, teach what I want to teach. But yeah, good for you. Well, I'm excited to watch your YouTube channel explode. Your energy is infectious in a really good way. And you, um, yeah, you're killing it. So thank you for sharing some of those mindsets, I think the whole fear and values mindset that you just shared is just, it's pure gold. So thank you. What would you tell your 10 year younger self? So, you know, go back 10 years to the person Crafty was back then. What would you tell her? I would tell her to be more ambitious. She was mm -hmm. always all about like, she, she was so gentle and so easygoing and like, just be a good girl, do your best. And that's it. Be more ambitious push at your limits keep pushing at your limits like if you come up with like you do something today and you think oh i can't do this then add to that to the end of that sentence with like 
finish that sentence with, I can't do this today. Let's try this again tomorrow. Keep pushing at your limits. Be like Batman. Ignore your limits. Go yeah. all in. You know, uh, so yeah, I'm a massive superhero nerd. So my coaching is like littered with superior examples. You got to do that. So I would tell her to be more ambitious. She had no idea what she was capable of. And the yeah. only way she learned was by putting herself in situations that were kind of crazy and very challenging. And the things that she found out about her, they were awesome. So I love the person that I am today. And that wouldn't have happened. I wouldn't have become this person had it not been for, you know, all of those really, really bad, horrible challenges, bad, horrible days. So you got to push the limits. You're going to find this whole new person that's just waiting to help you reach the next level. Right. Right. I love how you, you know, you took all that fear that you experienced, it sounds like, and you've turned it into ways to help other women. So that's really fantastic. Thank you. So you would tell that 10 year younger self to be more ambitious, to just do those things that you don't know how to do, do it anyways, figure it out as you go. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank well, thank you for your time. I'm so happy to be, um, to be sharing you with our podcast listeners. And I, I just love everything that you're doing. Is there anything you want to leave Fempreneurs with before we end this, uh, this interview? Well, I just, I'm so glad to have been a part of the show. Thank you so much for having me, for giving all your time. And I want to thank your listeners as well for giving this episode their time. So all I want to say is that just you have all the resources, everything that you could possibly need to build that life that you've been fantasizing about. You just have to believe in yourself. You just have to take that first step. You will learn how to utilize all of those resources that you've not used so far, but you've got it. You are already that woman that you see in your fantasies. You know, when you imagine that perfect life, there is a woman going through that life. She looks like you, but she's not actually you. Well, you are yeah. already that woman. You just got to bring her to the surface. So nice. believe in yourself, get started. You will get there. For a fact, you will be there. Right. And if you need a coach, um, Kratzy yeah, is available. Yeah, and where yes. can people find out more about your coaching and maybe book a one on one with you? What's your website? So you can just go on to my website, pratimera.com, P R A T I M E H R A dot com, and there is a work with me button there. Go on to that button and just book in a free call. Uh, it's a 15 minute call so that we can make sure that we are well suited to each other so that I'm actually the right person to help you. Once we have cleared that hurdle, we're sure we are with the right person. We'll go ahead and we'll figure out what works best for you and take care of it. Fantastic. All right. Well, you have a fabulous evening. And, uh, and yeah, I hope we uh, connect again in the future. Absolutely. I hope so too. And I hope you enjoy uh, the rest of your day. Take a power Thank nap. <laughs> I will. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Take Thanks, care. Kratzy. Bye, everybody. All right. Before you take off, thank you so much in advance for sharing this episode, whether it be the YouTube version or the podcast with another fempreneur who would find this inspiring and helpful. I also want to let you know about a brand new course that is, uh, it has a bunch of ladies in it right now and they are loving it. They are gaining some new knowledge and doing some new things in their business that they've never done before. It's called the event design and marketing course. You can learn all about it over at yycfempreneurs.com and just click on the courses button. There is an awesome free gift there waiting for you as well at the homepage of the yycfempreneurs.com website. So please grab that while you're there too. And I'll see you back for episode 105 next week.